Ladies and gentlemen, Musical Chairs is on the air. Artists, songwriters, instrumentalists, producers, sound engineers, and anyone else in the arts. Thank you for joining us. On this episode of Musical Chairs, we have a new guest who's sure to entertain and inspire you. Hear their story, feel their passion, and join them in their journey as we put them in the chair. Now please welcome your hosts, Lisa Berry and Eric Lambier. Hello, everyone. Hello, hello. Welcome to Musical Chairs. Chairs. Hope everybody's doing great today. <laughs> All right. So, Eric, today we're really a full house because we don't just have one. We have two people on the line with us. First of all, we have the artist, and then we have the producer of the song as well. So, and I swear we got three. I, I think, think we have a manager too, but he's probably in the background. We don't know yeah. what's going on. With that. We gathered everybody just to have a, a daytime party here. We did, yeah. <laughs> so now, and also, I believe one of our guests is the guitar player on the song that we'll be featuring. Absolutely. Uh -huh. yeah, Dale Russell on the line with us. <laughs> and we'll so, get into his bio in a bit, too. Yeah. So we're going to just share with everybody that um, today today we really wanted to share with you guys what journey a song goes on. Because, like, we as the listeners, you know, get to hear it and it's fun and we go either dance to it and sing to it or get this nice emotional feeling. But it really has started from so far back and for different reasons all the time. And it goes through a lot of hands, a lot of ears. Definitely, and we'll be, we'll be featuring our artist, Jason Better, and his new song, Another One More. And we'll be talking about the recording, the writing process, uh, which we do on this show all the time, uh, of, of what, uh, what's going on with that. So, so that's our, yeah, that's our theme. <laughs> all right, so we're going to welcome Jason Better and Mr. Dale Russell and, and Laszlo. I can't pronounce your last names. So. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, you guys. Hi, good morning. How are you? That's Jason, right? Yeah. Right, yeah. Right, there you are. <laughs> uh, Welcome to the show, Jason. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Great to be great to do it. So it's been actually a fun journey because you have just like just like within the last month. That's it guys. Just the last month have I'm gonna be cool here, have dropped a single and it's called Another One More, and so we want to just uh, talk about that just for right now to say, we, okay, that song, how has it been since that's come out, and everybody's hearing it and singing and listening to it? Yeah, it's been really exciting. Um, you know, got to play with, with some really great people, record at a great studio, the Chalet, yeah. and um, yeah, and it, uh, it, it went just from, uh, from paper and pen all the way to where it is now in a, in a matter of no time really right on now you are a singer songwriter you've written a lot of songs for, uh, over your career correct yes sir oh uh, great and uh, you are a guitarist as well just want to sort of uh, lead the people through this a little bit i i play a bit of guitar you play acoustic right i try to sing <laughs> <laughs> Well, you're like a campfire. Well, I'm a campfire guitar player. I'm more of a piano player. <laughs> I call myself a campfire guitar player. Uh, yeah. I just want to share, this is really neat for me to, to watch this is because you say, you know, you're the writer. And a lot of the times when you can write, you, you can't always sing or play an instrument, but it's important that you pick up something because you got to get this to the musicians in a way that they can do their own magic to. So is that why you chose the guitar or, or do you play other instruments? Well, I started out on guitar and uh, really started writing songs when I was uh, a young teenager and uh, found that moving towards songwriting was a, uh, a little more fulfilling for me. And I started singing because there was no one around to sing. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> and, and you slowly get better and better at it. And, uh, yeah, so it, it's been a great, great journey that way. You know, I always like asking, I know this is probably a simple question. I mm -hmm. hope we don't catch you off guard. Let you think about it for a second. Because I like asking artists why you write or why you play. Because a lot of people have a different sort of reasons for it. It could be anything from I just like it, you know, I like the way people cheer around me, too. I got to get this out. I just feel 
you know, inspired constantly to write. So I'm going to ask you that question. Why do you write? <laughs> um, thanks. I, um, it's something I always think about constantly. It's, it's a constant in my day and, you have your brain radio and your antennas up and sometimes you receive these great signals and you got to write them down. Right on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. exactly. It is kind of like that. I think with a lot of inspiration, Hey, Lisa too, with with writing books Um, and things. Actually, this is a neat one because you shared with me and I thought this was really cool that this particular single, so it's another one more. It was somebody came to you and asked you to, to write this. So now that's a totally different thing. Like somebody planted the seed and you had to kind of grow it. So um, does that. I didn't know that. This is great. Oh, okay. <laughs> so uh, how, like when somebody asks you about a song, do they give you too many details or do you just tell them just leave it at a very minimal and then you kind of go into your own thing? Well, no, it was nothing specific. I was asked by Mike Pallon to write a country song. Okay. And, okay. Okay. And I was in a a local pub and a a gentleman started talking to me and and he had paid his tab already and started talking to me. So he he ordered another beer and paid for that one. He was going to leave. Then he started talking again. He said, I'll have another one more. (laughs) (laughs) Perfect. And then the next, the next day um, I woke up and a little scrap of paper in my pocket said another one more. And I sat down and wrote the song in about the time it takes to play it. Oh, my gosh. Wow. And that's interesting. I I will say as a songwriter, sometimes it does that, and then I've had songs that take me a year. (laughs) That's really cool how it just flows out like that. Do you often have it like that, or is it a bit of hit and miss? You're probably going to like me. I wish it was always like that, but no, it's not always like that. Yeah, I wish it was always easy, right? (laughs) Well, the nice thing is, too, is... um, I have uh, I have my mentor. He's, yeah, I've been my teacher since I was a, a kid. His name's Stephen Cordingly, and he's he's here with us today. Oh, oh, oh hi, we got more Steve. people. Welcome, Steve. Hi, Steve. <laughs> hi there. How you doing? Good. <laughs> oh, I knew it was a party. I got drop in. <laughs> and, and the nice thing is, is that uh, you know Steve tells me where to put my fingers, and uh, also <laughs> record records uh, and uh, and um, writes with me as well. And uh, we spent many years, about 30 now, uh, about that, and uh, just on the journey of music. And then with this song, um, Mike Plon hooked me up with Dale and Rob, Rob Laidlaw. Oh, yeah, and cool. Aubrey Dale playing drums. And uh, I just, yeah, I couldn't, couldn't, I couldn't ask for or, or wish for a better group of musicians to play with. It's really great. Oh, I have a question. Okay. So that because you just said that, so you are so, you know, you, it sounds like you just couldn't be happier. Like you said that what happens to a song when you don't have the right musicians, does it affect the song? Um, it, it, you know, it depends what you're doing. If you're keeping it or if you're, you're writing it and, and giving it to them and you, you could just tell they're not getting it, but they think it's great. You, you, you've done your job. You planted the seed and, you know, um, but if, if, if it's for you to p- perform and play, you really want to get it right. And I think you always know the guys you want to play with. You always know if it's going to, mm. going to be right, you know? Now, now was that, were these guys chosen from Dale? Cause I know Dale, you have a lot of connections. With these fellas, yeah, they're um, hi by the way. Uh, oh, hi, Dale. Dale, <laughs> um, Dale Russell, folks. Yeah, I was well. You know, Mike. Mike called me up and said, "Hey, I want you to hear this guy." And I came over and he and he played a couple of songs and he played uh, another one more. And that was the song that uh, of the the few that uh, Jason sang that day that I thought was the strongest. And um, and we all did. And so therefore the the journey began in terms of taking it to uh to the studio and so on and yeah the guys uh that that uh, jason mentioned rob laidlaw great bass player been around a long time and uh aubrey dale a killer drummer like heavy duty uh you know yeah. multiple genres and uh and dave chester who owns the chalet studio of course where most people probably know that if they know of that studio, they know that Rush 
uh, used to take that that building over for months at a time, and there are so many famous people that have gone through that studio. And so um, once we agreed that 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 was the song, and uh, Mike and I talked about it, and um, I told him, well, if if you want me to produce it, then I'd be I'd be more than happy to do that, and uh, and we'll pick we'll pick the good the good boys, the good players. And we had Anita Paris as well. And we had Anita Paris coming in on. Oh, back. Anita! Right. Yeah. Cool. And, um, uh, it, yeah, I mean, it was just a, a wonderful lineup of people, and um, so off we went to the chalet and and banged it out, and uh, then I brought it back here and did some mixing and, and mastering and so on and. Also, we did that group sing, too. We did the group sing. We got a bunch of people singing. Like, we needed a, a bar room kind of a, of a feel to it. Uh, oh, yeah, it's at the end of the song there. Yeah, we yeah. You know, are thinking of the old, uh, you know, Friends in Low Places. Uh, song. Absolutely, yeah. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah, it works, yeah. I don't have any of those, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> no idea. places. Oh. Okay, that's your next song. And just to give you a little history, which I don't know quite a whole history of Dale Russell, singer, songwriter, producer, and played and sexually and played uh, guitar with the Guess Who, correct, Dale? Yeah, that's that's uh, good, good, uh, succinct. Look. Is that yeah. good? That's succinct. <laughs> your life all in one uh, in one minute. <laughs> but you no, know, just a fabulous guitar player. Well, very much like like uh, Jason, I knew as a teenager that. that <laughs> do and uh and i started writing back then as well and you know these days um you know music has has progressed and re you know, regressed in some ways too <laughs> but, yeah. you know, pointing fingers or anything but uh just uh you know it, it's one of those things but the, the great part about songwriting is that if you're honest with yourself and you come from an honest place you can you can definitely uh, telegraph and communicate that to a, to an audience. Um, yeah. Then there's the other kind of songwriting where you know it's just it's a pop song and you're going for for the for the, the pop. Yeah. And that's good. That works too because as you can tell, especially by many many young people like that um, uh, that love pop music and so on, and that, which is great. And you know I, I wouldn't mind having one of those hits, but <laughs> but you know, yeah. But I really do appreciate uh, when I hear something that is, um, you know, it's got character, it's got depth, it's got, uh, you know, good melody, and it, you can tell when when people enjoy it. And I I really believe that this song that uh, that Jason is is working right now could have some some very good results. I'm hoping. And thank you for for including us. Well, thank on your you. Show. That's great. Oh, yay! Well, that's really neat that you said that specifically because you really um, kind of like you fell in love with the song and you knew it. You had a vision. You felt the right people that would come to it. And a question about songwriting because as a songwriter, they're writing a lot of songs. How does one know? Like, say, say Jason wrote a song and he was just like, this is this, he was attached to it. He really felt this had a journey, but no, no one else was kind of feeling it. How do you know how long to hang on to a song? And it. It, it's funny because those are the ones the ones that i oh. love best are always the ones eh. yeah. <laughs> oh, no. oh. so yeah. what do you do with that though like how like comes if you have such faith and belief in a song but nobody's getting it well you wait till till eric invites you to the campfire oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well it's like friends in low places was actually recorded before garth did it i don't know if people oh. know that but one of those brothers bands and it did nothing. Oh. It went nowhere. I mean, so sometimes it's good to hang on. Yeah. I well, your question. I <laughs> so I'm just like, but I mean, that's my sort of view. Sometimes it's good to hang on, but other times it depends. I, I would say myself, I'd see if you guys agree with this, you know, pass it by some people who know, I mean, every friend of yours will say it's the best thing you've ever written. Oh, right. They really will. Your wife will tell you, my God, I, that's amazing. But you know what? He really pass it by some people in the know because, you know, a lot of times it'll guide you. Sometimes it doesn't. Other times it's like, you know, this, that Man Eater song, you know, back in the 80s. Man, oh, yeah. Man Eater. You know what? It wasn't even supposed to be on the demo reel. And yeah. look what happened, you know? So it became, you know, the biggest hit there. So. Well, you, can, you can always be wrong. Like uh, everybody has the right to be wrong. 
and uh, and occasionally that happens. And, hey, I'm going to use that. Write that down. <laughs> yeah, I, I, don't, I, I already that. got it. Actually, I've I've got that one <laughs> copy written already. Freeway now. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, let's, well, we'll just get together and write it. How's that? Yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll get together and steal each other's songs. Here we go. <laughs> Already done. Sorry. <laughs> the real truth about writing is that, and uh, you know, as a as a as a whatever, as a musician or as a songwriter, you're always a little bit self conscious about, especially if you're divulging any kind of truth, yeah. uh, and you feel like, oh man, I don't know, it's taking a risk. I'm putting it out there, and I don't know what to do. I'm insecure, and we're all insecure artists. We're, that's what <laughs> that that uh, makes us push on. And then every now and then, like you said, Eric, uh, you know, a lot of people are going to tell you that, yeah, I love it, I love it, I love it. And you go like, I, I don't really love it. But but and then you take it out and you play it out and um, to people that you don't know. And if they like it, that's good verification. If they, uh, you know, start um, talking loud and forget all about you up there, then maybe that's a sign, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And what I remember somebody, one artist telling me a sign of the times that people start texting. <laughs> yeah, here's your done in the middle of your song. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, actually, the, and now that we've built the song up beautifully, we're going to sneak away to commercial in the next 20 seconds here. But when we come back, I just want everybody know that you'll be hearing the newly dropped single, Another One More, and it's by Jay Better. Jason. Jason Better. And I guess I call him Jay, Jason, or. <laughs> and, uh, and we're going to be playing it live right here on Musical Tear. So when we come back, woo another one more. Hope you like it. <laughs> okay. Conscious Media for Conscious Minds. Om Times. Om Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Connect at ohmtimes.com. Ohm Times, creating a more conscious lifestyle. Hello, I'm Sandy Sedgbeer, host of Ohm Times Magazine's flagship radio show, What is Going On? My passion is sifting through information, research, and innovations from new thought teachers, speakers, and researchers, pushing back the boundaries of what we know about life, energy, metaphysics, and the universe. I love shifting perceptions about who we are, why we're here, and how quickly impossible becomes normal when we open our minds, expand our awareness, and accept that the only limits that exist are those we place upon ourselves. So if you're the kind of forward-thinking, eager investigator of what lies beyond the current reality that most perceive, why not make a date to come play with me in the field of possibilities at 4 p.m. Pacific Time, 7 p.m. Eastern Time every Thursday, and together we can discover what's really going on. Long ago, you wouldn't think of galloping on a horse while doing calligraphy, and you wouldn't have attempted to ride your bike while typing a letter, yet you think you can safely operate a multi-ton vehicle while texting? Behind the wheel is no place to multitask. If you want to BRB, drive now and text later. Lives depend on it. Visit StopTextStopRex.org, a message brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, Project Yellow Light, Noise, and the Ad Council. All right. We are back in musical chairs. We've got Jason Vetter on the line and friends. We have Dale Russell. Roslo. Steven Russell. <laughs> 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 You've got everybody. And so we've got host Eric Lambier and I'm Lisa Berry. And we are so excited because we are going to get to play you guys a really fun country song. Like, <laughs> Absolutely. Jason Better's new song, Another One More Again. And uh, yeah, we're looking forward to it. This is the America, the America debut, isn't it? Oh, yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but, uh, okay. So uh, 
I got a lesson. I mean, a message for for Eric. Oh, okay. From Laszlo, he says, um, "Eric, you don't get a beer because you can't pronounce his name." Oh. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> this is this is the work musicians have to do here. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You know, you what to do and. Uh, I'll be nice to her. <laughs> All right. Okay, so here we go, everybody. It's another one more by Jason Better. Well, I found a little spot a couple months ago. Now the neighbors want to know why I ain't been home. Because I had another one more. Well, it's easy to make some new old friends there. Leave your change on the bar just to show you care. And have another one more. Well, tell me now, mister, you've been there before. You got there at five and you're leaving at four. You can't seem to get yourself through the door without another one more. Well, I'll have another one more. Now call it a night, keep my boots on the floor. gets up and she sits with me I'll give him another one more that's right well tell me I missed you you've been there before you got there at five and you're leaving at four can't seem to get yourself through the door without another one And everybody can like I've so been there before. Well, it might, it might be a little more cups of tea for me, but <laughs> you, you just end up saying because you're having such a good time and you're chatting and it's it's a yeah conversation. Come on, you like having a wine, Lisa. Yes, I do. <laughs> okay, the wine's not really drinking, is it? Yeah, no. <laughs> it's it's a, a bad a, video, right? It's like having a Caesar. Caesar's not really drinking. Oh. <laughs> So I might have another two more. <laughs> yeah. uh, so with that one, you want to have him walk us through the uh, We're just going to walk through a little bit of thing. I, you know, no, this is a very, probably a very difficult question. But when, so when was it written? It's fairly, it's a fairly new right, right, Jason? It was in the last six months? Uh, I would give it that, yeah. So the last six months that you wrote it. So let's just walk a bit about the studio again. 
it was recorded at Chalet Labor Studios in Claremont, Ontario, which is a beautiful spot. And uh, just walk us through the people again who played on it again. We had Aubrey Dale on drums. Right. And we had Rob Laidlaw on bass. Right. And, okay. um, and, and Dale did guitars, right, Dale? Guitar. Yeah, Dale on guitar as well, yeah. Perfect. Yeah. And right. we had um, Anita Parrish singing backups and, and – uh, her, girl, her friend's name that, that she plays drums too, but she came out and sang. And we right. had Blaine Zimmerman. We had uh, Steve even got in on yeah, the on Steve the group vocal. And Mike Salon was in on it too. Um, yeah, we was. had the, the whole family. Was that at the end there? Was Mike? And I could, thought I could hear him cheering at the end there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm only kidding. <laughs> couple off tune voices so you get that reality sound. Everybody <laughs> sings too well. It just doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That that's my motto. <laughs> I live by it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so when you're when you're all in the studio like that, it like it it just really is about having fun. But you have you have an outcome in mind and like did you guys know how, how soon you'd be putting it out and releasing it or was it that planned or just all let's let's see how this goes. Um, it was a, it was a just sit back, be humble, be quiet, and and one step at a time. Let's see what's what's gonna come out of this. Let's let's hear let's hear what's what it's going to sound like, and then uh, you start feeling comfortable. And I mean, I did my vocal take in twenty minutes. Mm-hmm. What? Yeah. Nice. All right, people are hating you right now. <laughs> well, that's because I, I cracked the whip a couple of times earlier on in the post. Got him to to really go over the song and make sure that he was totally, uh, you know, connected to to what it was. Yeah, and I got the scars to prove it. Yeah, so the pre pre production really makes a difference when you walk in with confidence. Mm. There may be a few little changes here and there, you know, because once you're in the studio and the guys are playing and um, the vibe might change just a little bit, or it might go deeper than you think it might, and uh, and all of a sudden it's pulling more out of you. And but the pre-production prepares you for that. And uh, he did a great job. Like truly, all the guys did. Well, thank you. Oh, so how many days were you recording? Do you figure? Uh, four hours. Yeah. <laughs> so you did the whole song, everybody's parts, in four hours. Yeah, knocked it out just like a you know pretty much like a Nashville session. Just holy <laughs> I could have no. did it faster, but I had to go grab a couple double doubles for these guys. Or else <laughs> yeah. Oh, for the long, the all nighter. I was going to say, who delivered the pizza? I, I, <laughs> you know, I'm really, <laughs> I'm really glad you mentioned about pre pro. And I have to say, so I come to Eric often. I'll say, Eric, I, I want to do this commercial. See, I love doing commercials. That's my thing. She's and, the commercial queen. And, and so he's like, okay. And then he all, and then as soon as I arrive, he says, okay, now did you practice? And I go, <gasps> No, I ran out of time. I was just, he goes, oh, he goes, he goes, it's so important that you, first of all, get calm, forget about what's going on in your life in the day, you know, and, and really, like you said, go deep into what you're doing, connect with it. And so that really resonated to me. My ears just perked up because I know that if I don't, it, oh my gosh, the, the, um, he's like, start again, start again, start again. <laughs> well, and the other thing too, as I found with commercials or even with the producing songs and myself is if you listen to some songs, uh, that kind of gets you in the mood. It's like I remember talking to a producer once, and if they are, say, doing an aggressive song, they'll actually watch some aggressive parts from a movie, mm-hmm. something like that, and it gets you sort of in the mood. Or if it's a romantic song or a party tune like this, you could, you know, do the same kind of thing. Just get your inspiration up, right? So is that what you guys, like, what did you guys do? Um, well, yeah, I mean, in the four hours we were in the studio, I think I watched Dale drink like a case and a half of Canadian. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, perfect. <laughs> was my phone busy? No, it, 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 it was like really at Olympic rates. I, I was like, <laughs> yeah. I had a whole new respect for him after that. I, <laughs> you know, he's full of it. You know that, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, I yeah. It. yeah. <laughs> so what what is it that you like? You guys do. Is it something you listen to? Is it something you think about? Is it something you read? You just you just make sure you get a good night's sleep before. What is the preparation for you guys? Um, I think it's just being comfortable, knowing that that the ground you're laying and and the song that you're doing is something worth giving your time to, and and something that you want to keep. 
oh. and lasting um, to you, you know. Uh, you, you you leave behind a few things, and, and tunes you write is definitely um, a great thing to leave behind, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. I have to... Fact is, is that the you know when you when you have good players and you got a, and you got a great studio and mm-hmm. and you've got a good song and what it does is is uh, like every one of these guys are are professional very like Eric I mean you, you know you're a killer player and there's there's oh, you. You know, there's that little that little bit of inspiration that that turns into a lot of inspiration mm-hmm. because there's so many people that really want to do their best and they really want to make the artist happy and the producer happy. And, and, uh, you know, there's, there's a few different kinds of producers. There's a producer that says my way or the highway and they've got a good record track record or something. And, and all of a sudden you are the puppet on the string. Yeah. Yeah. Or you can be the kind of a producer that is very, very conscious of what it is that is, that needs to happen. But at the same time, what is this group of, of uh, musicians going to bring to the table and what is the artist going to do uh, mm-hmm. when it's their turn? And mm-hmm. you have to, you have to, uh, you know, coach. And at the same time, do not be afraid to, to say, you know, perhaps we could try this. We've already got that. So let's do another, another take and let's try this mm-hmm. until you get to that, that zone where, you know, it's, it's undeniable. <sighs> right. And that's what, what makes hit records, hit records is, it's undeniable. Yeah. So which is the day off, Jason? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> which which kind is day off? Well, I honestly, <laughs> uh, I, I I did my vocal track at the very end, and I think I might have said ten words in the studio the whole day. But uh, before that, I knew I was in really good hands. Oh, great. And and I nails easy to work with. I, I was kind of a joke, but absolutely, <laughs> yeah. I, a bad I, one. I felt really comfortable right away. I knew I was in good hands, and I said, um, "Yeah, go." <laughs> um, you, you know, know I'm great. glad that you um, you, Adele, that you mentioned um, a hit record there because one of the questions and what I really wanted to title this whole theme was, um, when a songwriter, when anybody's writing, like it's usually their dream to get into the hands of the stars, like the great ones that you're like a legacy. You're talking about, you know, you make sure that you want to, you're proud of it that you're leaving this here. And I'm thinking of the word legacy because I'm kind of doing that in whole months right now, but. Good. Um, yeah, and so when you think of a hit record, I mean that is it's leaving a legacy. So um, how when when any songwriter is writing, do you think that that's where they're imagining that song going to, like the top, or like does it start there? When does it become like I want a hit record and I want a hit song and I want this, the greats to sing this? I, I well, good <laughs> uh, yeah. Or like you know, you get your paycheck every two weeks and you think it's going to be something, and when you get the envelope, you open it up and it's always a surprise. <laughs> 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 Yeah. Okay. So it's, a, it's um. I think for me, I gotta say, for me, I still remember between grade eight and grade nine learning some pop stuff, and I remember going back into high school and playing, and and all of a sudden there were people around, and they all they got sure. and there was a lot of ladies coming around, and I gotta tell you that, that I think at that point I went, this is kind of cool, <laughs> you know, for music, yeah. not only the musical part. Because I've always loved music myself, and I'm sure that you boys are the same. But it, it's kind of when it's inspiring and other people liking what you're doing too. It sure sure makes you want to do it, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And and yeah. for me too. I mean, it was grade nine early on, like that. I uh, I met Steve. He was actually my music teacher, and that's how we met. And I was you know kind of a scrappy little kid with you know long hair and and dirty jeans. Yeah. And uh, you know. He, he took me and uh, we started on a Tascam four strap, right? Wow. Oh. I had a Tascam. Yeah. <laughs> the difference with, with Jason and, and a lot of kids was a lot of kids would learn a song to be able to say, hey, I can play Stray Cat Strut or whatever and get a bit of attention. But he wanted to learn stuff to incorporate it into his own playing and his own style. And I could see that very early on that he was taking a different approach to it. And that's what made him really stand out. Thanks. That's a great Aww. answer. That is really. It's that was Steve, by the way, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, Steven, yeah. Steve Cordingly. And, uh, and whenever I do write a song, 
Um, Steve has a studio in his house, and we uh, we go there and we demo it, and, and he, uh, he usually helps me a lot with the bridges. <laughs> oh yeah, that's okay. Steve, Steve is the bridge master, <laughs> and uh, and and he, you know, I'll I'll lay it down, demo it, work on it, and um, I think then going in and approaching um, musicians with uh, something in your hand like that is is a is invaluable it, it speeds up the process immensely can I, I, that's okay a super important question a lot of you know at home studios because you mentioned he's got a, home, a studio in his home a home studio now then you we also talked about chalet being this a big you know studio where lots of people have like top, tippy top people have come through but they're equally important like you said for their role so do you always go to a home studio would you say to do your demos or do you and then go to the big studios for the finished ones well, sure. I mean, since the beginning, guys have probably had tape decks and push play and record with a cassette deck. <laughs> yeah. you know, I'm so happy showing everybody, you got to listen to this, you got to listen to this. And, you know, that's how it starts, scratched out on a pizza box, on a napkin, on a, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, it's it's just um, uh, Steve has, has built himself a, a really immense, um, expensive and beautiful pizza box. <laughs> that oh, nice. <laughs> on, you know? That's yeah. fabulous. Oh. Thank you for that. Well, yeah, because I think if it, as people walk through, they're like, hey, I've got a song. Where do I start? So um, yeah. we're we're going to sneak away to commercials, the final commercials here. Um, but when we come back, Eric's going to continue walking you guys through this journey so that everybody can listen because there's so many, so many creators and songwriters out there, and they're just going to learn so much from you. Go back to musical chairs, folks. Woo! The Real Conscious Connection, Ohm Times Radio, IOM FM. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. My name is Victor Furman. Some call me The Voice. I've always been fascinated with human nature, spirituality, science, and the crossroads at which they meet. Join me Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern on Ohm Times Radio, and we'll explore these topics and so much more on Destination Unlimited. has taken everything and everyone I've ever loved away from me. Everything. I blew my ankle out and I got prescribed pain pills by my doctor. If making my detox public is going to help somebody, I'm all for it. I just wish I would have had a warning. Opioid dependence can happen after just five days. Know the truth. Spread the truth. A message from Truth, the Ad Council, and ONTCP. Back to musical oh. chairs with myself, host Eric Lambier, and Lisa Berry, <laughs> and we have Jason Better and company on the line with us, folks. If you're just joining us, yes, in the chair, <laughs> in the chair. Yeah. <laughs> so we've got a couple of questions here about this visit. So um, another one more. It, it's been launched. No, that's my buff word. What's your word? We've been. It's been released. <laughs> it's been released. Now you guys, you're you're getting. I think you were saying you're getting some airplay, which is good. Correct. Well, I think we just did, didn't we? But- no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> Woohoo! You heard it here first. But where can people check it out after from here? They go, oh God, I really want to. You're on, you're on all the, the like Deezer, Spotify. Yes, correct. It's it's available on on every uh, major. We store. bought it, by the way, so you owe me a dollar twenty nine. <laughs> oh, I. <laughs> <laughs> No, um, yeah, we did. We, we buy all the artist stuff. Uh, we do actually for to promote the artists as well. So what we, what I was gonna say too is the folks out there, 
uh, either in Canada or across the U.S. or wherever you're listening to us, you know, if you have a local radio station, please, you know, request, if it's a country station, request another one more by Jason Better. I'd appreciate that. And, you know, you can find us on Facebook. Uh, Jason oh, yeah, Better. where? I, I'm Jason Better. Okay. You have a fan page, of course. Um, yeah, and uh, I mean YouTube, cool. all the all the all the streaming platforms. Jason, better another one more. Cool. Oh wait, I have a question. So, say somebody's listening and they they wrote a song and they've actually got it demoed. They've even maybe produced it. How? Who did that for you? Who? Like somebody says, uh, there they're in the creative state and they're like, well, I don't know. How do I get it on on YouTube, Spotify, and all these places? What do they do? Correct. Yeah, Hope. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, you really, you know, you always hear you have to be at the right place at the right time. Yeah. It's so true. It's so true. You know, um, I, I was sitting in a in a in a small bar, um, playing acoustic guitar by myself, and that's when Mike Pollan walked in, heard me play, and gave me his card and said, "Write me a country song and call me." And I mean, I was at the right place at the right time, and and. I've always heard that and, and tried to run around being in the right place. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, it, 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 it happens when it happens, and that's just the truth. So, and did Mike, Mike hooked you up with Dale? Is that how the process worked? Yes, correct. Yeah. 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 With Dale Russell to do the recording. Yeah, there's something really important to be said there. I just love that you, you really set the scene because you said you were in this small little pub or bar and you got out there and I think a lot of people that's what they're like you're not going to be heard or seen the right place in the right time is not hiding away and you've really got to feel comfortable and just and you never know where it could be and that's why it's important to always kind of say yes like just say yes and and get it out there like it's not going to yeah. happen on your couch no it's no. not I mean I've always been the kind of guy if I don't have a gig or a couple gigs on you know if I'm not playing a gig on Friday I panic well, yeah. you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. That's so true. What yeah. Are gonna eat? Yeah. Well, just, yeah. Now, are you, Jason, are you the kind of guy who's so I know, confident or brave um, that you would, like, if you were just out in a, I don't know, sitting in a park, would you just get your guitar out and kind of sing out loud and then go for it? Or? <laughs> I play everywhere I go. Um, oh, okay. I, I, I play hours daily. So yeah, <laughs> so and, and I do. I take my guitar everywhere I go. I always have. But you have a you have a new thing on the go right now, right? Like the uh, yeah, he's, he's um yeah brand new, brand uh, new news. Yeah, it is really. Thanks. Um, okay, drum roll. <laughs> no Aubrey Dale, but here you go. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I'm 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 putting out uh, humble music. Uh, Humble Music Studios. It's a it's a, a music instruction facility with a uh, guitar, bass, drum, keyboard, vocal teachers. Also has fully equipped rehearsal uh, rooms available. Um, also, there is an auditorium uh, which holds 200 people with a stage and lights. And we're gonna throw a show uh, starting once a month, uh, starting at the end of March. And uh, yeah, it's it's a really exciting uh, venture. That, oh my uh, gosh! Do really people happy. sign up for that, or how's that work? That's exciting! Congratulations! Thanks. Where it is? Where is it? <laughs> yeah. it it's right downtown Oshawa, uh, seventy-two <laughs> Richmond Street. Um, the sign will be put up tomorrow. Look for it, Humble Music Studios. Wow! And come on in, and if you if you want to learn. Guitar, bass, drums, keyboards, vocals, or if you're in a band already, and if you if you want to spend some time uh, learning and and being around music and and you know just just feeling the vibe and and catching a piece of it, then this is going to be the place to go. Okay, oh, cool. I am so I know I'm happy. This is exciting. I really think this is incredible. Okay, we need to tell everybody which we are. And uh, so, <laughs> so is it? Sorry, are you? This is yours, or you've partnered with people and you're supporting it or representing it? Or um, I'm I'm basically um, I'm heading it up, but I have a ton of support. So okay, okay, and um, so the once a month concert, let's say, is that somebody uh, like the Eric? Like they sign up? Like could Eric and I just scooch on in? Or you know, like, like, absolutely. absolutely. Oh, we're still there. Oh yeah. <laughs> Maybe we can do a show from there sometime. That'd be kind of cool. 
Oh yes, absolutely. We're in it. Um, yeah. <laughs> you okay? You're in. <laughs> last, hey, everybody. Last books the bands and uh, yeah, last books the bands and 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 heads up the uh, the the live events in in the facility. So um, yeah, we'd be really glad to have you. And um, you know, it's it's gonna be gonna be a place full of music. You know what? Thank, thank you, Laz. I I appreciate that. I'm just saying that for me as well. Um, that is bringing people together. And you know what? By the, here's this is such a perfect segue invitation because as we just said, it's not going to happen sitting on the couch. So if somebody's like, well, I don't really want to go to the bar. I don't want to sing in the park. I, you know what? Go to a place where your people are, and you never know who you collaborate in the right. Oh, this is so exciting! For us. Absolutely. <laughs> Great. Uh, the other question I had was about what plans in the future of it. Um, you know, there's a lot of festivals around. Would you guys be into doing any of those kind of things? I mean, yeah, absolutely. Festival season's coming up. It's a good time to get out there and um, and start. Sometimes with... you get people at festivals who don't go to bars, right? And yeah, absolutely. it's a good good way to get your song out there. I played one. Yeah. Um, also, you know, I've I've been working a lot and doing a lot of writing. Um, uh, I have. A whole country album written. Um, nice. I just, just demoed a new song last night at Steve's place. It's uh, called V for Victory, and um, looking forward to doing it again. Yeah, you know, all I want to do is do it again. <laughs> there you go. There's another song I'm stealing. <laughs> There's a theme here. It's called the repeat button here. <laughs> No, I just I want to have I have a question for for Mr. Dill. Um, you you've really seen Dill. Why do I keep saying that? My God, we're back. Dill. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I am blushing, everybody, just so you guys can feel that. Um, um, when when you're you you produce, but you also do a lot of session playing. When um, do you is that what you did? Did you hear his song, um, Jason's song last night, and say, yeah, that's the one. I feeling I'm feeling the lines with that one. Yeah, that was when Mike invited me over and I listened to, to Jason. And, um, yeah, that was the song that, that stood right out to me. And, um, and The V for Victory or the or oh, another one? Mark? Oh, he hasn't even heard that I one yet. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's so, yeah, you're letting, okay, I was thought he was going to, would he, is he going to get to hear it? Because now you've downloaded it. Yeah, I'm sure he'd do it right now. I want to I want to play it for him, but he's on the phone. Oh. <laughs> All right. Um, so, okay, so we've got an album. We've got the. So the next, hopefully, the next release will be that. But we like, but I can't, like, but whew, if I could talk correctly, would like to concentrate on another one more being out there. So, are you guys now? You perform locally in a steady gig, correct? Um, right now, I'm, I'm, I'm going sporadically out and, and playing. Um, locally, and, and yeah. I'm really, I'm really uh, battening down the hatches on another one more, and um, and focusing on uh, more, more, more songs. And and yeah, it, it's one thing to write a song; it's another thing to write an album. And I'm sure you know what I mean. Yeah, uh, for sure. Yeah, it has to. You have to have a flow there, and kind of. Once you hit the vibe, once you get three or four songs into it, it kind of takes on a, a life of its own, and and that's really where I'm at right now. Um, it is getting it to the people, get it yeah. to the people constantly, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's about getting it out to the people. So that's that's that, that's great. What's that? You go. Oh, it's, um, it's, it's, turn, it's my dog. Um, <laughs> video. So a lot of people, because you mentioned that you're on YouTube. Um, is there a video coming out for it? Or do you have a video on YouTube? Um, you know, uh, how are you doing with your iPhone? How can be willing <laughs> and uh, things like that. I'd love to do a video for another one more. Um, it kind of like. You know, when you you used to listen to uh, radio shows, you you close your eyes and and picture what's going on. I I love doing that, and with this song, I I think it could just uh, be a great visual, uh, as as well as um, as well as audio. So yeah, I can really picture a great video for this tune, and I I certainly love to do that. Yeah, it lends itself to a good video too. You can all see those follow the lyrics through, of course. 
Yeah. You kind of put, you got a little humor in there, a little bit of your humor in there would be cool. <laughs> yeah. So, and it's so easy to make videos these days. You can almost do it with like a couple of iPhones. <laughs> You're good with it, right? There's a lot of lot of things out there right now that aren't uh, you know like totally high tech, but they uh, they get the job done. And um, you know, I find that there's a lot of things you know on Facebook, etc. You know, even YouTube and so on. Where it's just very, very casual, but they're, you know, the singer is singing a song, and some some cases it gets a little more elaborate, and um, yeah, I think you know as long as there's some realism, uh, but there's but you know I mean it, with the cameras and and so on, not only just on the phones but other, you know, good good quality cameras, um, yeah. you can do just about anything. Definitely, and it's good. It's good I find some artists what they'll do is just do a live version of, it. as opposed to having the whole band and doing the whole video thing. It's just you and a guitar, or you and a couple of players. Unplugged. Huh? Unplugged. There you go. That's the. That was actually no music board. That's awesome. <laughs> you can do it unplugged, and you know what? And gives, and you like Dale says, it gives it a sense of realism. You're doing it from somebody's living room or something. I mean, it's it's kind of cool that way, as opposed to always trying to dress it up and be, you know, I mean, if you got the budget, go for it. You know, but, yeah. but that's good. That can be a pretty big budget, as we all know. Right. <laughs> Oh, oh, that's oh, so. That's another thing too is um, budget. Uh, when you're, because like if we're thinking about you're the title of this whole show, we're thinking, okay, writing songs. We want the greats to hear them. Does it? Do you think the budget reflects? Like if somebody were to spend, you know, like is it just like a a chance, an opportunity, or do you think you no, you need to pour the money into it to get it out there? No, it's 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 all about the song. If you could yeah. sing guitar in your voice and entertain and, and play a song that stands on on its own ground and uh-huh. is undeniable, then it's it's out of your hands now. Mm-hmm. Um, done it. That's it. You know? Right. Okay. Uh, that really gives a lot of confidence, too, I think. So if you were to give some tips to uh, songwriters right now so from where you, where you have been and where you are, like, if that songwriter out there is getting frustrated, they're like, oh, my gosh, I have, like, hundreds of songs. Like, what, what tips could you give them to do right now to get themselves into a better, get it, Jason, better, a better place? <laughs> uh, one at a time. One at a time. And, and you know, the, the first rule, in, the first rule in, in being a musician, I think, is don't stop. Oh, I love yeah. that. Also, I think uh, I think a couple of places people have said well, you kind of meet people. I mean, sometimes they can be, uh, you know, a bit of holes. But the thing is, you can go to open mics a lot if you find the right open mic. There's a lot of musicians and sometimes a lot of writers there um, that you can hook up with as well. Or mm-hmm. I do know. Remember, I remember years ago. I don't know if they still do it. They used to put out like the music. To, what was it called? Where it had producers and all kinds of people in it. I don't know. Do they still do that? Do you guys know? Around here, they put out that kind of a, a magazine where you can find producers. Oh, um, right. Yeah. Um, lawyers. I remember that. I do remember that. It was like a musician's newsletter kind of thing. Um, yeah. And, and, you know, now now we have uh, mm-hmm. we have internet on computers now. So, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, people, people run to that and, and you, you have a wealth of information at, at, at your disposal there. Um, that's really the that's really the the platform that's going to last now. And, and I guess you can also you know obviously with Google or go right. on Facebook and punch in. I mean I've done a lot of stuff with Facebook, especially festivals. If you punch in, you know your yeah. genre of music and that kind of thing, you can hook up with a lot of people. Whether they respond to you is another question. Well, but, whether, uh, right, and that goes back to having songs that that stand up. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and you know that really is it. Yeah. If, if you believe in that in, in these songs and 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 they stand, then get them out there. Yeah. Um, a lot of times, if if you go stale a little bit, you start thinking, well, why would anybody care about my song? What I have to say. Right. And, right. 
it, it, and it, if you start thinking like that, then write a song about that, and then oh, write uh, right from the heart. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'd like to. Uh, we're getting to the end here, right? Yeah, we're literally finished. But I just, just a, a quick thing there. I love that. Don't stop. If anybody's out there, just don't stop, and and just keep putting it out there. Keep pushing through. I like That's that. Right. But we'd like to thank you, fellas, for being on. Thank you, Jason. Mr. Dale Russell. Dale yeah. Russell as well. Steve <laughs> Carty and Laz, I don't know your name. Um, <laughs> Laz, I owe you a beer. Zephyroski, how's that? Oh, uh, Laszlo Zephyroski? There you go. All right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, for Google. everybody, go get Jason Better Song, another one more. Another one more. Thank Check you, it guys. Out. Play it all you want. Request it. And okay. thank you, fellas, for being on. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, guys. Thank you. All right. Okay. Bye, everybody. Musical right. chairs. Woo! Two weeks. We'll be on again. <laughs> Thank you.